Okay, thank you. I'm Zach Giles from NYC Mesh. Um, NYC Mesh is a decentralized, community-owned mesh network in New York City. It's for both local use between neighborhoods across the city and also provides access to the internet. Um, we have about 200 nodes online today with about 2,000 people have registered to host a node in their apartment or their home or their building. Um, and out of those 2,000 people, we have about 850 plus or minus members in our Slack chat that are actively talking about this in a different channel for every different neighborhood um, and in many general channels, hardware channels and so on. Um, in the last year, um, through our SuperNode 1, we've transferred about 100 terabytes delivered to uh, people from the internet and across different neighborhoods through six community hubs. Um, and we have additional SuperNodes coming online uh, very soon. Um, we're largely project-based, so every time we, uh, you know, in the very beginning, it was quite a slow start, um, and after each of our different SuperNode projects, and now the Mozilla Winds uh, NYCHA project, um, you can see our growth has really skyrocketed and kind of follows the trend of each different um, uh, project coming into play. This is an example of an installation, um, on a typical installation on a roof. Um, this picture is kind of special because we have two people in this picture that are from Baltimore, and they took the train down to New York to see how an installation works so they can learn about their installations in their kind of city and get some thoughts about it. So we're trying really hard to work with other cities and uh, you know, get meshes working in those areas as well. Um, for the Mozilla Winds prototype, we deployed a new neighborhood hub uh, into a New York City P Housing Authority public housing building, which is for low-income housing. Uh, and we did this in partnership with a sustainable energy company called Block Power, who has a sensor network for measuring and monitoring temperatures and uh, energy. And they used our mesh as the backhaul for their sensor network. Um, this hub also provided access to the residents and the public areas of the building, um, in addition to a train station nearby, a park, and the surrounding areas. Uh, this is a picture of the New York City Housing Authority building. On top, you can see a small water tower. Um, here's a picture of the water tower where we placed our antennas along with police uh, repeater antennas just adjacent to them. Um, here's an example of the inside, the mesh router we have, um, local access, which goes down through a corridor as well, um, and a Raspberry Pi for local mesh services uh, in addition to many other sites that have a similar setup. Um, here is some of the installation team and the antenna. Um, so the impact of this prototype is that in addition to this building itself, the sensor network and so on, we were able to connect another 20 buildings to this hub in the first three months, uh, which makes this one of our most connected hubs and already makes us start thinking about upgrading it past this point. Uh, here's a before and after picture for that neighborhood. Uh, we have a substantial number of nodes already, but many neighborhoods are out of reach for us, and this is an example of a, a neighborhood that just filled out right away based on this hub um, immediately. So more generally, we propose that about 20 super nodes and 30 of these type of hubs can cover most of the city of New York. Um, what this does is, it, it, one, one important aspect of this is that not all of these sites are cost effective to implement because people can't afford to, um, you know, place a hub in their building or, you know, a lot of, will go to these buildings like they'll be interested, uh, the housing developments and so on will be interested, but we just can't give them so much uh, funding directly. So the main blocker for implementing these kind of things is funding. Um, we're also thinking always to improve ourselves as well, so we're thinking about uh, security, resiliency, uh, core infrastructure, innovation. Uh, in the security front, we realize that um, you know, mesh networks are inherently uh, owned by the community, so data can transfer in any direction. A lot of our legacy links are not encrypted. We're working on encrypting those by converting them as we upgrade them. Um, and, but we do see statistically most of our traffic is SSL and TLS, but we want to make sure we provide a good baseline for in-mesh traffic and so on. In the resiliency front, based on our model, our super node hub node model, we kind of reduce the blast radius of any node hijack or any kind of mistakes. Um, additionally, route filtering helps that and so on. So we're trying, th this model kind of, maybe even one neighborhood might break at a maximum, but it shouldn't cross over. But we do want to balance that with making sure that we automatically, uh, that we provide auto meshing so people can join the network without asking anybody, because it is an open community network. Um, on the sustainability front, we want to make sure, uh, and we, we currently have only one major super node, um, but you know, we just signed a new contract for an additional second super node, which should be starting right, right now. Um, and we, we do always want to make sure we're continuing to doing peering, uh, donated bandwidth, uh, donated transit, sorry, um, additional connections and other ways we can connect to people. And we'd love to see a regional network in the area that connects between Boston, New York, and, and Philly, and so on. 
Um, and lastly, on the innovation front, we want to make sure that we um, send the message that mesh is a design, not just a software. Um, and so that we, that custom hardware is no longer required. You can do this with off-the-shelf components. And so we're taking a pragmatic approach from that. Uh, we're moving that specialized tech into the open by taking that was previously carrier grade and using it for people uh, in their homes directly. We're building tools around that so that we mimic what could be like the future internet or you know the internet for us in our area, which helps people with an open choice of their hardware so that they can use just any hardware that is able to route traffic. Um, and this ultimately increases um, in the knowledge of the tech workers or, or everybody so they can understand how tech is not just a magic. Thank you very much. All right, questions for yes, Zach. Sir. Good. Uh, am I correct in understanding that you, um, your backhaul is basically through free peering at the IXP? Yes, yeah, so, so we have our own BGP ASN, our IP addresses and so on. We're on an IXP. Uh, we also get, we get some full tables from different donated companies that like to give us a full table. We also get a large portion of our traffic directly from peers. Um, we're also we're coming on to another Donia Transit at our second site uh, real soon. Um, but we do find that somewhere around 70 to 80% of the actual bandwidth, the content, is delivered directly via the Internet Exchange. So, yes. So if, I mean, you're kind of dependent on the kindness of strangers in a way uh, to survive. What, what would you do if, if, um, if, that, if that model failed? If they sure. Yeah, so I mean, based on the fact that we have our own BGP, ASN, and so on, we can uh, always procure fairly cheap internet by peering with somebody. You know, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of uh, fairly low, uh, low cost providers. You know, once you're in a data center, you can just cross connect with them. But additionally, the mesh itself is still a real proper mesh. So anyone can decide to share their internet connection from their home and so on. And we have kind of an internal tiering system that will prefer to route the traffic through a nice pure net neutral connection at a super node before it goes out of a, a home connection or a donated connection. Can you talk about what it means to be um, community owned and what that ownership model looks like? Sure, yeah. So right now we're a project of the Internet Society. And based on this, um, all of our community uh, our, our super nodes and our hub nodes are run and owned by us as a community as a whole. But the nodes on people's homes, they pay for them, they own them, and they can run them. We will help them run them if they want, and various volunteers throughout the neighborhoods help people run the nodes and kind of take ownership of those nodes. But we as an organization don't own them. So it's actually fully owned and distributed by various people across the entire city while trying to maintain the community parts, like the important pieces, um, you know, as a whole. Does that answer your question? Can you say more about the sensor network that you mentioned? Sure. Um, you know, we didn't develop the sensor network. We're just happy that other people are using cool things on our network. So this this company, Block Power, is monitoring uh, temperatures of water pipes and uh, corridors and power usage and so on. And they're reporting that back. They're part of um, some other grant process in New York City to uh, try and make buildings more efficient to reduce wasted energy and so on. So so we're just using them. They're, we're allowing them to use the meshes backhaul to their servers. I have two yes. quick questions. Yes, Is the mesh link themselves, are they encrypted? Um, some are and some aren't. We have several different generations. Uh, the new ones are, the old ones aren't. Okay, and then are you um, planning on doing anything with Easy Mesh, the WFA's? The e Easy Mesh W, uh, sorry? Um, wi Fi Alliance's new Easy Mesh, are you planning on integrating with that? I'm not familiar with it, I'm sorry. It seems like your location is one of the hardest in terms of your success will create more interference, making it harder as bandwidth needs escalate. How do you plan on dealing with that? Sure. So this, this architecture we've kind of made with the super nodes and hub nodes isn't uh, a top-down architecture to kind of say we're selling you internet. It's just that in, in New York we have these high skyscrapers between these various neighborhoods, and that's kind of like different cities almost. And so we use this architecture to, to jump over. And so in this style, we actually prefer or demand point-to-point -point links between super nodes and hub nodes. So um, you know, every area, every super node region kind of starts the network over again in that sense. Although it is taking some bandwidth from the air, uh, is you know more of a dedicated channel than it is uh, you know taking away from the broad spectrum. So it, it is a concern, but I think it's a regional concern rather than like a citywide concern. I hope that answers your question. Can you tell us how yes. uh, ordinary users might find out about you? 
What are you doing in terms of outreach? Who are, who are your, your customers who are getting internet access? Sure, the, the members of our network are just whoever um, wants to see it. Um, all of our access points have public access points that are just open and available for anybody. Um, it's a lot of uh, people talking to people and finding out about us. Uh, we, all, we get various, like every type of person comes to our mesh meetups um, and we have, uh, you know, we have lots of marketing that's going on. I mean, we're not doing the marketing, but there's lots of media that's picked us up, local radio stations, newspapers, and so on. So it's kind of uh, a word of mouth, but it grows really fast. And, um, but yeah, it's an open access network. People can ask for it in their home and we'll show up and help them install it. And uh, you can even use it as a public access point on the street uh, if you want to. Great, thank you so much. Sure.